Now, another way through which we acquire information is through our daily experiences with the physical world. You know, when we experience the physical world, we actually develop mental models of how the world works. Now, the sum of these mental models form our intuition. Intuition often is commonly referred to as a hunch. You know, that strong feeling about something that you just feel it is true, but you really cannot explain why it is true. This deeply rooted beliefs reinforced by our personal experience with the world often leads to misconceptions about the physical world. Do you remember the example I told you before? If you touch the door handle of a door, it feels cold. Another good example is if you walk on carpet it feels warm but if you walk on tile it feels cold so if you ask someone are they at the same temperature i can certainly guarantee that 80 percent of the time people will say that you know the tile is at a lower temperature but the truth is they are at the same temperature. The fact is you feel cold on the tile and you feel warm on the carpet. But the truth is both the carpet and the tile are at the same temperature. You see, this is a common example of how our experiences with the physical world can lead to a common misconception. So how do we know if they are at the same temperature? We follow a systematic process through observation and, and, and experimentation that leads us to come to the conclusion that they are at the same temperature. We call this process the scientific method the scientific method another typical example would be you release let's say a bowling ball and a basketball on a ram identical inclined planes the question is which ball reaches the bottom first? Let's assume that the inclined plane is super smooth, so much so that there is no friction. Will the bowling ball reach the bottom first or the basketball? Or will both balls reach the bottom at the same time? The question is, the answer in your mind is that response based on a feeling, a hunch, or is it based on experimentation? Now, students often use their intuition when they encounter unfamiliar situations. Understand that these powerful feelings cause us to accept ideas as truth really without critically evaluating the basis for the feeling. Sometimes it may lead us to make the right choices based on our prior experiences in similar situations, but research in education really have shown us that some of these perceptions or mental models we have developed based on our experiences with the natural world are incomplete or outright completely incorrect. And unless we confront 
these mental models and correct them, we will keep on making the wrong decisions when we encounter that particular situation. Now, in science, the most common means we acquire knowledge is through what I call logical reasoning or simply logic. There are essentially two types of logical reasoning. You have logical deduction and logical induction. Let me say that again. There are two types of logic. You have induction and you have deduction and they are totally different. Now, logical deductions actually occurs when a conclusion is claimed to follow necessarily from its premises. So, if the premise is true, then the claim will also be true. In this particular case, we are actually reasoning with a theory. Understand that a theory is an explanation of a set of facts based on a set of repeatable and testable observations that is generally accepted within the scientific community to be true. On the other hand, a premise is a previous statement or a preposition from which another is inferred or follows as a conclusion. Let me give you an example. But before I give you the example, I want to repeat the definitions. Let me remind, recap the main points. The most common means through which we acquire knowledge in science is what we call logical reasoning or simply logic. There are two types of logical reasoning. You have logical deduction and uh, logical induction. Logical deduction occurs when a conclusion is claimed to follow necessarily from a premise. So if the premise is true, then the claim will also be true. Here we are actually reasoning with a theory. But the question is, what is a theory and what is a premise? In simple terms, a theory is an explanation to a set of facts or a phenomena based on repeated and testable observations. For example, if when rain falls, you, you will most likely on a sunny day see a rainbow. You may come up with an explanation of why rainbows form. If that explanation is true in most of the cases, then it becomes a theory. So a theory is an explanation of a natural phenomena based on a set of repeatable and testable observations that is generally accepted within a group of scientists. On the other hand, a premise is a previous statement or preposition from which another statement is inferred or follows as a conclusion. Take for example, the law of universal gravitation, which is one of the most important laws in physics, basically tells us that anything that has mass attracts another thing that has mass with a force that is proportional to the size of the masses but inversely proportional to the distance separating the masses to the square of the distance separating the masses this means that if the masses are doubled 
the force of gravity will increase fourfold. Now, here is an example of a direct logical relationship between the premise and the conclusion. On the other hand, logical induction occurs when we reason to the theory. For example, it has been observed that for the galaxies from Earth, let me say that again, sorry about that. It has been observed that the further a galaxy is away from Earth, the faster it is moving. Therefore, we can conclude that the universe is expanding. Now, look at the order of that statement. The conclusion or the theory is that the universe is expanding. How did we reach that conclusion? That conclusion, we came to that conclusion by the fact that when we look at galaxies further away from Earth, they are moving faster than galaxies closer to Earth. So we can reason logically that the universe is contracting. This is an example of logical induction. Many times, as shown in the examples that I have given, logical reasonings leads to the truth. However, sometimes logical reasoning alone can lead us to make incorrect conclusions. Let me give you an example. And this is a dangerous example, so you should not try this at home. Current flows in a circuit if there is a potential difference across that circuit. This means that if you take a cable and you plug it into the socket on the wall, by this theory, current flows. But if you take a seesaw and cut the cable into two, even though there is a potential difference across the cable, current will not flow. So what is this telling us? The conclusion is current provided the circuit is closed. However, if the circuit is open, the presence of a potential difference will not produce an electric current. This means that if your premise is incorrect, you will not draw accurate conclusions from it. And since there is no way to know for sure whether your premises are correct or incorrect as a result, whether your conclusions are correct or incorrect, logical reasoning by itself has its own disadvantages. In other words, it is not sufficient it is not a sufficient means through which we can obtain reliable information because for the same set of data we can reach vastly different conclusions. So this brings us to what I call the scientific method to acquiring knowledge.